Hi guys, so here it is one of those great times of year when we get a new version of Unraid. And this time it's 6.10 RC2. So let's take a look and see what's new. So, if you're running what's called the next branch of Unraid, well, you get to see the beta and the RC versions as they're released. And so if you are running the next branch, well, you may well see a message like this, saying Unraid version 6.10.0 RC2 is available and we can update now. And there's a couple of things in this release that I'm really excited about. Now, the obvious thing is, you can see from the title of this video, is the official Windows 11 support. But there's actually something that I think I'm more excited about when it comes to VMs than that even. So what I'm doing here before I upgrade is making a backup of my flash drive just for safety's sake. Now I know that nowadays since Unraid 6.10, the flash drive can automatically be backed up to the cloud and tied to your Unraid user account. Just should something go wrong, it's easier to have the copy locally and not have to worry about it. Okay, so after making a flash backup, I always like to update all of my plugins before an upgrade. So I'm going to click check for updates and then afterwards click update all plugins. Now the next step isn't strictly necessary, but I think, well, going to a new version of Unraid, let's just check all the Docker containers are up to date as well. Okay, so for me, there's nothing to update here. So I can go across now and upgrade the OS. So to update, I'm just going to click on update at the top here. Now, for any reason you didn't see the update at the top here, you can always go across to tools and then update OS and update from there. Okay, so the new version's downloaded and all I need to do now is reboot. Now, if you look at these notification windows on the right here in green, the plugin update helper has detected that I've actually upgraded and it's going to download the new NVIDIA driver and also the new OpenZFS driver for the version of the kernel that the new version of Unraid has. So that's pretty cool. It's nice to know that these two plugins are updated before I reboot. Now, as I said earlier, if you didn't see the upgrade notification at the top, just going on to Tools and then Update OS, you can update from here. Now, if you're on the stable version of Unraid, you need to change it here to be Next and then download the OS from here. Anyway, I'm all done. I'm going to go back to the main tab now and then reboot my server and take a look at what's new in 6.10 RC2. OK, so the server's back up. And the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to click on the little I button here and see what's actually new. Now there's a whole load of updated packages here. I'm not going to go through everything, but you know, you can see what they are here. We've got a new version of QMU here, new version of Samba, and obviously we've got a new Linux kernel. We're on 5.14.15. If you want to see what's new in Linux kernel 5.14, head across to OMG Ubuntu and have a look at this article. I'll link it in the description. But there's various things such as core scheduling support, and even some sort of feature to better unplug a Radeon graphics card without crashing the system and various other things here. And this is interesting here. We've got TPM chip drivers here. This is important for Windows 11. Oh, and if we look here, it looks like Unraid's now got support for version 4 NFS shares. Good news for anyone using the Aquantia USB 5 and 2.5 gigabit controllers. They're supported now. And for people using the NVIDIA driver plugin, this is the version that's going to be installed on this version of Unraid. Now, I'm not really going to discuss much of what's here. Basically, a load of fixes and little improvements. One of the main ones that you're going to probably be interested in is there's a new VM template for Windows 11. And that uses a custom OVMF with TPM support. OK, so let's go over to the VMs tab and have a look at that. So if I click on to add VM here, here's the new template for Windows 11. So if we click onto it, let's quickly fill in the template and then install Windows. Now this isn't really going to be a tutorial about installing Windows 11, because there's a video coming soon, which is a very detailed guide about how to install both Windows 10 as both a daily driver and a gaming VM. But for now, I'm going to quickly go through this. I've just given it four cores and eight gigs of RAM. And scrolling down here, we can see now we've got three different BIOS types. We've got CBIOS, OVMF, and the OVMF TPM. So with this, we've got TPM support for Windows 11. That also means we should be able to use BitLocker as well, I think. OK, so on this server, I haven't got a Windows 11 ISO. So I'll quickly go to the Microsoft website and download that now. 
Now, if you're not on Windows and you're on a different OS, I'm on Mac OS here, but if you're on Mac OS or Linux, you don't have to use the Windows Creation Media tool. You can just download the ISO. Okay, good, so the image is now downloaded, so I'll put it in the ISO share and continue the install. Okay, so now that's in the correct place. Let's go back to the VM template. And under machine type, personally, I don't like using i440FX. I always get better results using Q35. So I'm going to change from the default, but you know, you can use whatever you prefer. Obviously, we must leave the BIOS on OVMF TPM. So I'm going to browse to the ISO image I just downloaded. Now for VertIO drivers, make sure you're using the latest one. As of making this video, it's this one here. Now, if you want to download the latest one, that's pretty easy. Just go to settings, then VM manager, and here you can download the version that you want. Now, this version here at the top is now available in Unraid 6.10 RC2. So I suggest you download it and use this one. Okay, let's go back to the VM template. Primary VDisk, I'm going to set it for 100 gigs, and I'm going to change it to QCOW2. Okay, everything else I'm going to leave standard and click on create. Now I'm just going to show you a little tip here. If when you're booting Windows, you kind of miss the part where it says press any key to boot, and it goes to this screen here. When you see the shell prompt here, just type exit, go to continue here, and then press any key and you'll be back in. So let the installer boot up. Go through the wizard, choose Windows 11 Pro. So click next and then agree to the license. Choose custom install and now click load driver and click on to browse. There's the VertIO disk there. I'm going to scroll down to the bottom here. And under VIO store here, there's no Windows 11 driver, so we're going to use the Windows 10 one. And we want AMD 64 and click OK. OK, so it's pretty much next, 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 and then just wait till you get the wizard. Then just go through the wizard, choosing things like your language, your location, username and password, all that kind of thing. And then finally, when all that's done, you'll get to the desktop. And once here, then we should install the rest of the VertIO drivers. So we'll open up Windows Explorer. So I'm going to go to the VertIO drive here and run the VertIO Win64 file here. Then basically just click next, 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 go through the wizard, and that will install the VertIO drivers. Also, it's a good idea to install the VertIO Win guest tools as well. Again, just next, 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 and install that. Okay, so that's all the drivers loaded. Now we're gonna check if the trusted platform module's actually loaded. And to do that, I'm gonna type in here, tpm.msc, and then hit enter. Okay, great. All working. Okay, so now we know everything's good, we can leave Windows 11. Head back to Unraid and continue looking at Unraid 6.2 RC2. Now, at the beginning of the video, I said there was something else exciting about VMs that had been added. Well, if I click on to add VM, there's no other templates here. But if I open up a terminal window here and I type QMU system A arch 64 space hyphen hyphen machine base help. Well, you can see here, we've got all these different CPU types. So what's been added in is ARM guest support. So now we can run an emulated ARM CPU on our x86 server. Now I've been looking forward to this for years now. I think about four years ago, I made a video about how to install an emulated Raspberry Pi. But to do this, I had to install another Linux distro as a VM and then run the Raspberry Pi as a VM inside of that. So not ideal at all. And you know, over the years, I've been asking John P and Tom, hey guys, any chance we can have the ARM QMU package on Unraid? And the answer that I heard was soon. So I want to say thank you to the Lime Tech guys. I'm really glad today is soon. Now at the moment, the ARM emulation is experimental. So it's not available in the actual GUI to be able to make VMs that way. For example, if we look at a VM template, there's no selection to be able to add different CPUs. We've only got emulated and passed through. So all that kind of thing has to be done manually in the XML. And if we go across to my main server, I've been messing around with the ARM emulation here. I managed to emulate a Raspberry Pi and got Raspberry and Buster running. So here we are, emulating a Raspberry Pi natively on Unraid. Awesome. 
Okay, so let's take a look at the CPU in here. So I'm going to type cat forward slash proc forward slash CPU info. Cool, so as far as Raspberry is concerned, it's being run on an ARM compatible processor. Right, so let's close this VNC window of this VM and go back to the Unraid web UI. Okay, so really that's it. I think I've covered pretty much everything that's new in this RC2. Unraid seems to be just getting better and better and I'm really looking forward to the full stable version of 6.10. Anyway guys, that's going to bring us to the end of this video. Now I really hope you enjoyed watching this video. If you did, then please hit the like button, subscribe to the channel and share the video with anyone else who you think might find it interesting. And to all the people who watch my videos and to all of my awesome Patreons and supporters out there, thank you so much guys for supporting me. I really do appreciate it. I wouldn't be able to make these videos if it wasn't for your help. Anyway guys, it's getting late here so it's time for me to go. But whatever you're up to for the rest of the day, I hope it's good. And I'll catch you in the next video.